Hi, today we are testing the Facebook profit model for time series predictions on financial exchange data or historical price data. In our example, I used the Euro US dollar forex prices. This is an example of the predicted versus real closing prices on the hourly time frame. We're going to do this in Python as usual. You can download the code file from the link in the description so you can follow the video and our analysis without worrying about the coding part. Profit is an algorithm released by Facebook development team. It can process time series data and provide predictions for future values. So which is very interesting for us traders. And the interesting part is that it takes into account the general trend of the yearly, weekly, and daily seasonality, including holidays effects. So you can see where this is going somehow. It works best for seasonal data where the different trends are somehow clear, which might not be 100% the case in trading. And a good thing to know is that the model is robust to missing data and outliers, which is something very important in our case. Sometimes we get data with a lot of weird values, outliers and missing data. And this is not something we have to worry about because the model is going to take care of this automatically. The way we will use this tool is the following. Imagine we want to make our predictions from this candle or from this hour on. So we will consider a number of back candles. These are the last 20, 30 or 40 candles. For example, we will allow the profit algorithm to run and fit on the back candles data. And then we call the prediction function for the coming few candles. The model provides estimated values with upper and lower boundaries. So we have a kind of a prediction window rather than just values. And in our program, the numbers of back candles and the future candles for our predictions are left as parameters. So you can experiment on these when you download the code and check how it affects the results. Okay, so now we will go through the Python code, then we will examine the results and see how we can use this tool for our trading. And by the way, this idea was proposed by someone in the comments section. So if you have some of those exotic, crazy ideas, just let me know leave a comment and I'll see what we can do. So at this point, it's a classic procedure. I'm importing pandas, I'm reading the CSV file. Again, Euro US dollar candlesticks, one hour data frame from 2003 up to 2023. We're not going to use the whole set of data because it's uh, it takes a lot of time to run. But I mean, I'm going to share the CSV file and the Python code with you so you can try it on your own. Then I'm filtering all the candles where the volume equals zero because these are the candles of holidays and where the market wasn't open. So we don't have any trades uh, during these candles. Then we're resetting the index. Um, we're checking if we still have some missing values. I'm going to comment this for now. We're not going to use it. Um, at this point, I just selected a slice of 1000 candles because you're going to see when you run this um, profit indicator or profit model it takes some time to compute over these candles. I don't want to run it over the whole data frame. We're going to run it just on a small slice as an experiment. And then when we decide on some parameter set, we can run it on the whole data frame. If you want to dive deep into the details of the profit model and forecasting and the time series they are proposing, they have their documentation on their website. But in this video, the most important thing to know is that profit takes basically two columns. One column is the date string, the DS, and the other one is the target, which is the Y. So the original data frame has these columns. So this is what I have in my CSV file. We have the open, high, low, close and the volume columns and also the GMT time. And so at this point, we will rename the GMT time column into DS, the date string, which is required by the profit model. And then we will create a new column called Y which is equal to the closing prices of the candles. The reason I'm not renaming the closing column here is that I want to leave it intact. I don't want to mess up the names. I'm just creating a new one with the, um, the same values, but basically a different name. And depending on the data you have, you're going to have to do some cleaning. In this case, we have to get rid of these four characters here at the end. So these are the fractions of seconds. We don't need these. So I'm just selecting a slice of the date string column, dropping the last four characters. We can also notice the new column that we have just added, the Y column, which is equal to the closing column, same values. And now I'm casting the column uh, DS to date time, according to a specific format. So we have the day, the month and the year, the hour, 
the minutes and the seconds because Profit and even Pandas, they don't guess automatically the format that you are inserting the data in. So you have to provide this information to avoid any mistakes. Then we can define a new function called Profit Signal. It takes a data frame, um, candle index, number of back candles, number of front predictions, or the number of candles in the future to predict the values for. The difference limit is, uh, is a parameter that we're going to discuss later on, but for now we're not using it. And then we have a signal as well, so we're not discussing these immediately. We're going to discuss these later on. For now we can be uh, just using those four parameters. So first I'm doing a deep copy of my data frame within the, uh, the function so we have a local data frame so I don't change in any way the uh, the original one that we are passing as as an argument then I'm defining the model variable which is equal to profit we have to import profit you have to pip install it if you don't have profit you can just type in one of the cells pip install uh, profit and this will install profit on your system so again we define the model variable which is equal to uh, profit and then we're going to fit uh, using the fit function, so model.fit on our df split data frame. Profit requires two columns. It's not going to read the open, high, low, and closing prices, nor the volume price. It's going to look for two columns uh, at least. So the ds, the date string, and the y, which is the target or the dependent variable. And we should have these two columns in our data frame. And uh, Profit is going to look for these two columns. It's going to read these, and it's going to fit... Uh, on these columns. So the ds is going to be the independent variable and the y is dependent variable. For the future, we're going to create a future, uh, let's say, data frame or uh, data strings. So future is equal to model.make future data frame. Uh, the period is equal to uh, front predictions, the um, argument that we have just passed. So if it's five, then it's going to be five periods in the future. If it's 10, it's going to predict for 10 periods in the future and so on. The frequency is hour because we're working on the hourly time frame by default profit is going to consider a daily time frame so it works on a daily basis you have to change this if you're using a different time frame then we have include history is equal to false uh, this is basically if we want to include the um, back candles in the uh, data frame of the predictions or you want to ditch these and just make some predictions for the future candles. Once we have defined our future date strings for our data frame, we can run the predict function using the model, which is the profit model. So forecast is equal to the model dot predict and predict on the future. So basically future contains a data frame without any predictions yet. It's just the shape of the data frame that is interesting in this one. And then we are applying the, uh, the model to predict in the second line here using the predict function. Then we're going to jump to this part because we're going to use this function to make two different things, either predict a categorical um, feature or a categorical target or predict an exact value. So this part of the function will extract the predicted Y hat, the predicted Y values for the future and the lower boundaries and the upper boundaries according to the uncertainties that are uh, provided by model. And now I can call the function just to test it. Profit underscore signal, I'm providing the data frame. Let's say the index of the candle I would like to uh, predict the future from, so 200. Number of back candles, 100. Front prediction, just one candle. I would like just to predict the next candle's closing price. And these two variables will not affect our results for the moment. I'm just putting signal equal false, just to predict the Y hat and the lower and the upper boundaries. And this is what we have. We have our Y hat, the future predicted value, 1.13. We have the lower boundary, 1.128. And then 1.1315 is the upper boundary. And now we can run this on the slice of 1000 candles. Remember that we sliced our data frame, taking only these candles from 1000 up to 2000. So we can run this function to predict Y hat, Y low and Y high. And it's going to take some time. You're going to notice that this is time consuming and uh, you will have to wait around five to 10 minutes, I think, to uh, just process 1000 candles. Here we're going to shift these predicted values by one unit. So we can compare these directly on our plot with the real values. Here I'm plotting uh, just a small slice between 200 and 250 indexes. 
Remember, these are only the closing prices of the candles, so we don't know what happened during the candle. But anyway, these are the predicted values compared with the real values. As a first impression, these results might look like good results, but for trading, this is not good enough. First of all, we are diverging from the good or the real data at some point, so we can check these two examples here, like these one, two, three, four points that are way too distant from the real data. And most importantly, uh, is the predicted trend. Let's take a look at this point, for example. So at this point, we have, let's say, somehow a distant prediction. So the trend was down, the real trend was down. The predicted trend again is down, but now the real price went up. And this is where the predicted trend in the next step went up. The predictions kept going up. It means that profit is predicting an increase in the price while the price is going down. These divergent moments here are the scary parts. So if you are having a prediction or an indicator is telling you the price is going up, most probably you're going to go long, so we're buying, and in reality, the price is going down. So this is not going to be helpful in this case. Here, it's not very important. I mean, it's, it's okay because basically the predictions are going in the same direction, so it's positive, and the price went up, only it went up more than what we expected and most likely you're going to hit your take profit so from a trading perspective this is okay but then these divergent moments are the scary parts so on its own it's not very impressive and honestly um, we're fitting on a hundred candles and we're just asking the model to predict one candle not more if we would predict two or five or even ten candles in the future I'm sure we're going to have worse results. So this is the best and the closest we can get to the real results. In my opinion, it's not a good tool for trading and this makes perfect sense for me. Remember what we said in the introduction, this model, Facebook's Profit, works best with time series that have a strong seasonal effects and several seasons of historical data. We don't have any yearly trend or a weekly trend. Maybe we have a daily seasonality, maybe we have some kind of a pattern, it might be caught by the model, but we don't have this set of yearly, weekly and daily patterns that are very structured so the model can capture these and predict efficiently. So in my opinion, we can stop here. But I had different idea that I wrote into the function, which is why not try to predict some categorical variables instead of uh, predicting the uh, y hat and the upper and lower values. Let's just put a simple category uh, procedure or category approach. So if the variable signal is equal to true, this is why we're using signal here, we're going to check if the next or the predicted next value is above or below the closing, the current closing price, by at least the diff limit value. So if it's going up by 8, 10 to minus 3, or down by 8, 10 to minus 3, we're going to return 1 for a downtrend and 2 for an uptrend, 0 if it's just within the band of 0 0.008. This way, your function is going to somehow provide you a result that's categorical. It's either 0, 1, or 2. And if you want to be more sure, you can increase this diff limit here. So we can increase it to 0 0.01 and so on. So you can try this on your own. I don't believe this is going to work. I don't know. It's just my personal intuition out of experience. I might be wrong. I'll let it up to you and just keep us informed. If you try this and if you have different ideas, I'd like to hear what you have in the comments section. Please let us know, share with us your experiments, and if anything interesting comes up, then why not? That's all I had to tell you for this one. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time. Oh, and one more thing, if you are still here, I forgot about. We have another tool called Neural Profit, again from Facebook. It uses neural networks, it's a different algorithm in the background. The problem with this algorithm is that to fit neural networks, it takes a lot of time. So we can't backtest this on uh, historical data. We can use it on live session, it's possible, because we're going to um, fit and predict one time every hour if we're using the hourly time frame. But if you are intending to backtest this uh, indicator on a set of 1000 or more, it's very 
time consuming and very CPU consuming, I don't think it's going to work on a simple laptop or a, a normal machine. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know about this one. I will keep it in the code. I will be sharing with you in the link. And until our next one again, trade safe. See you next time.